So this time we're looking at a different brachial plexus model than the previous one. This one's a bit more accurate, if you like, in some ways, in how the plexus is shaped. But because it's a bit more accurate, it does mean that some things are, are a little more difficult to determine sometimes. So it's really good for certain things, but it's not excellent for every part of the plexus. So let's have a look. We, what we're looking at is a right shoulder here. So I've got a right clavicle. We're looking at an anterior view here. Uh, and we can see that we've got uh, nerve roots up here. So here we're looking at uh, C5, 6, 7, and then C8, and then T1 right down in there. So there's our five nerve roots. That means that we can see that these two here, five, C5 and C6, are combining to form a superior trunk here. We can see that C7 just becomes the middle trunk. Or rather, we can't see it, but we just know that it does become that. So C7 and then the middle trunk. And then we can see, we can spot here, that C8 in green and T1 down here become the inferior trunk, just very briefly there for a sec. So we've got five nerve roots again, and then three trunks that we can see there. Now next, we get to the divisions. Now on this model, let's uh, zoom in I suppose and have a closer look. It's good to be orientated first, but let's zoom in and get a closer look at the plexus. So again, uh, we've got the nerve roots C5, 6, 7, 8, and then T1 down here. Uh, and then we've got superior, middle, and inferior trunks there. Now, the divisions on this model are here, but they're not as clear as they are on the, on the model where the whole plexus is just white. Okay? So I would probably shy away from trying to pin divisions on here and, and have you be able to accurately say which is uh, anterior and posterior. But what is brilliant on this model, and, and you will of course have noticed that it's colour coded and parts of the plexus uh, are yellow and green and blue, and of course the red I is the firstly subclavian and then uh, axillary artery here. Um, the, the way this model is coloured is for the chords. So, the lateral cord is here in yellow. The medial cord is here in green. And the posterior cord is here in blue. So that's why uh, all the structures are in different colours. And where it becomes useful is more distal when we get to the nerve branches. So this model is particularly good for finding the cords and then the branches that come off the cords. So if we look at the axillary artery here and we find that we have you know, a lateral and a medial cord, what we can see is that both those cords um, combine to become this nerve here, which is, if I can just get it to turn around, it's partly yellow and partly green, and that will be the median nerve. So it comes from uh, a, a medial root here and a lateral root here that become the median nerve. It sits just lateral to the axillary artery here and crosses over later on over the brachial artery to become more medial. Then we can also see that this green medial cord gives off another nerve here, which is the ulnar nerve. And the ulnar nerve only comes from the medial cord, so it's just green. It's not green and yellow. So that's really kind of uh, useful to see that. If we look then just at the lateral cord for a sec, we can see the lateral cord here in yellow, and we can see if we can spot the bit where it splits, I think we can, yeah, good, yeah, we can get to it there. You can see where the lateral cord splits, and after that point, it's, uh, it's given off a nerve here which will be musculocutaneous, going into the coracobrachialis muscle just about here, and then the other one, the other branch is giving off is that, that lateral root, which um, combines with the medial root here to become the median nerve, which means we're still just looking for then the posterior cord, and of course the, probably the best way to see that is on a posterior point of view. But the posterior cord is going to be behind the axillary artery, we can see it here, and it splits into two branches. We have the smaller axillary nerve here, 
running through what would be a quadrangular space if all the other structures were in place, wrapping around the surgical neck of the humerus, and of course it would be travelling with the posterior cervoflex humeral artery. And then this largest branch of the plexus would be the radial nerve coming in between the heads of the tricep here and then travelling down just behind the um, deltoid tuberosity through the radial groove and then and being very close or right on the surface of the humerus here. So that's what this model is brilliant for, really finding those five major branches and the cord. So you can see the roots, trunks and divisions on it. It's not like they're not there, but this one is particularly useful for finding the cords around the axillary artery and then the five major branches that come off them.